Hello, and welcome to Middlebury Edition. I'm Middlebury Representative Robin Shai, your host for the program. Middlebury Edition was created for the purpose of educating Middlebury residents about local services and activities, and to provide an opportunity for local nonprofit organizations to talk about their work. Today's guest is Sarah Briggs, Executive Director of the Middlebury Studio School. The Studio School is a 501c3 nonprofit organization, and they are currently located south of town on Route 7, but they have plans. The Studio School has also recently received a grant from the Vermont Arts Council, so we have lots to talk about. Welcome to the program, Sarah. Thanks so much for having yeah, me. Thanks for coming. I'm really glad to have you here. Before we get into the school itself, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself? I think you're new to at least the Studio School, or maybe new in your position, so tell me about you. Yes, quite new to the position. I started as the executive director in May, okay. so it's just been a well, few welcome. months <laughs> jam-packed with lots of learning. Yeah. Um, before that, I was in Middlebury, though. Um, I worked at the Middlebury College Museum of Art in a oh. curatorial fellowship um, for a, about a year and a half, a little bit more than that. So right. I've been back in town for a while. I was also an undergraduate student at the college. Oh, you were? Yeah. Okay. So Middlebury has been home I guess before. So. <laughs> yeah. Do you didn't grow up in middle in Vermont though? You are you from somewhere else? I didn't. From? I moved around quite okay. a bit, but actually Vermont was kind of always our home base. Yeah. So I oh, great. always knew I'd want to come yeah. back here. Good. So did you study art at college at Middlebury? I studied art history, art history. and dance. Oh, so okay. I love finding the intersections between the visual arts and performing arts. Mm. Um, but I did get to do a, a good number of studio art classes while yeah. I was studying art yeah. history. Well, that combination sounds like a really good um, set of experiences for you to be running the studio school. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. I'm so glad that I found it and that uh, the board trusted me with this <laughs> big, big <laughs> job. Um, I, my graduate degree is in art education. I found oh. um, after graduating Middlebury, mm -hmm. working in the arts, that it was really the educational aspect of things that I was passionate about. So yeah. that drove me in, in that direction. So it's a wonderful fit. Great. Oh, that's wonderful. That's terrific. And so tell me about the Middlebury Studio School and how they came to be. It grew out of Frog Hollow, which was really a, a beloved center of the arts yeah. community in Middlebury. Um, and when they closed, uh, three women who were involved there mm -hmm. started up the Studio School, Mary Lauer, uh, Barbara Nelson, and Kathy Clark, who are yeah. still working at the school with me. And um, I, I learn a lot from them constantly. Oh. Yeah. Um, so they started up the Studio School to really continue the educational side of Frog Hollow, particularly mm -hmm. the pottery program. So it's mm -hmm. grown um, from mostly pottery classes to more classes in yeah. uh, the other fine arts. Okay. Yeah, and I remember the the school, I mean, Frog Hollow was a beloved institution. I remember it was really sad when they had to close shop here, yes. and I think people were really wondering. We have a pretty creative economy in Middlebury, so um, that was a sad day. And I think I, I t must have taken, maybe from Kathy, she she was the pottery person, right? Yeah. Yes. So I, I took some classes at the old location mm -hmm. there when they had a kiln. So they've moved, was was the move to Route 7, the uh, Route 7 South, is that the where they moved? and where they've been ever since they had to move out? Yeah, they were in, still in downtown Middlebury for a time and then were able okay. to buy this building on Route 7, which okay. has been a wonderful space yeah. um, for the school. I would actually love to know how many people in Middlebury Kathy Clark has taught <laughs> over the years because I think she's really touched so many lives with, yeah. I mean, she just is so warm and really inspires people's inner creativity yeah. and um, she's lovely to work with. Uh, but yeah, back to your That's question great. about the building. Um, We've been there for quite a while and have just kind of outgrown it a little bit. Um, but our mm. pottery program will continue to be on site in that space. Yeah. It is great. We have outdoor space. We can have you know some workshops outside, events outside. We also have room to have kilns, <laughs> which is an important yeah. part of a clay studio. Yeah. Um, but having the non-clay non classes kind of on top of the clay program in there, is, it's getting tricky to schedule. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> well, that's a good problem to have. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. It must have been hard, and I know you weren't there then, but to, th they had to pick up and move the kiln and all of the equipment to this location? You know, I haven't actually really heard much of the story of the logistics of yeah. how they were able to, to do that, it, or if they were just purchasing new equipment when they moved uh -huh. to the new space. Yeah. Um, but they did a great job yeah. setting up a, a, what's really become a center of the arts community in Middlebury. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's great. And a, and a kiln is, um, 
what are the temperatures that they get to? They're pretty hot, don't they? they you get... know, I'm the wrong person oh, to okay. ask. Oh, that's too many kiln questions. <laughs> no, I promise that's no trick okay. questions. But... It's, pottery is so cool because it's really an art and a science. And I love going yeah. into the glazing room and seeing all of the bins of all the names yeah. of everything that has to come together. It's like alchemy. It's, yeah, yeah. really cool to learn about. Yeah. My background is more um, as a painter okay. um, and, as I said, a, a dancer. And I also yeah. was in, got into filmmaking, too. Into filmmaking, <laughs> But, but wow. pottery is completely new to me. So oh. I'm really learning that side You'll of You'll have things. to take a class with Kathy Clark. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the one thing I remember is that you would when you were going to glaze, you'd put something on and it looked like maybe nothing. And then it mm -hmm. goes into the kiln and it comes out and there's this beautiful thing that doesn't look anything like what you put it in. The colors change and right. all of that, that. So it is magic. Yeah. And it takes a lot of um, knowledge to know, you know, that this color changes to that color. You mix it with this, it co becomes that. Yeah. Um, but I think that that's why people keep coming back to classes because uh -huh. there's always more to learn, always more that you can explore with creatively and yeah, um, yeah just keep testing and making mistakes and you come out with something horrible but then you learn something really cool maybe by accident and yeah. you can just keep coming back forever and really go down the rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure. That's great. And um, so there are Besides the um, the clay and the pottery classes, there are, what other kinds of classes do you offer there? We have painting classes. So mm -hmm. right now we have some uh, oil painting classes that are going on, but later in the fall we'll have acrylic classes as mm -hmm. well. Um, we have drawing classes. We have pastel classes. We also have workshops in um, other kinds of crafts like basket weaving and bookmaking. <laughs> um, lots of fun different projects. Um, we have a digital photography class coming up, a uh, garden design class. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. That requires a lot of different kinds of instructors, doesn't it? It does. And how do you go about finding instructors? We have two um, art coordinators who are both great, mm -hmm. um, Jen and Carrie, mm -hmm. and they are really the ones who are finding our instructors. Um, but there are really lots of artists who live locally yeah. um, who are producing their own work but maybe need another source of income as well or just want to share uh -huh. the work that they're doing with the community so yeah. um, we really like being able to be an employer for local local artists mm -hmm. so most of the artists who we find to teach um, do live in Addison County yeah. um, sometimes the special workshops that we have are people who are coming from a little farther away uh -huh. and so if if I were an artist, I could go and teach one course a year or multiple courses if there was space available. I guess scheduling must be a bit of a challenge sometimes. Right, yeah, and it will become easier um, since we are expanding, which you teased. But, yes, um, we'll get into yeah, that some, in a minute. Yeah, some people come and will teach a course that uh, is the whole fall. Others mm -hmm. will come and just do a weekend workshop. Um, we have a range of different classes that mm -hmm. are from one day to 10 weeks okay. <laughs> long. Okay. So um, I think that gives some options for the teachers, but also yeah. for students and yeah. how they want to engage yeah. with the school. And do you have courses for all different levels? So if I'm a total beginner, I could find something. And if I was intermediate or above, I could still find something? We do. Yes. And different age groups as well. Okay. Yes, I think I noticed that you, you do obviously do a lot with kids. So mm -hmm. how, how young can a child start there? Around five is probably okay. where our programming begins right now. Um, I think that we'll have a little bit more flexibility to maybe go a little younger in the, in the new space. Uh -huh. And what sort of classes do the youngest ones take? What are, what are um, they like? Well, hand building for clay is something that's really fun. So as huh. opposed to throwing pots on a wheel, yeah. which is a, a kind of difficult skill, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, just building with your hands. Um, we have oh. a hand building room that's just tables. Uh -huh. uh, there's no wheel involved. Yeah. And that's something that wh where Kathy Clark really gets uh, people starting uh. young who then do it their whole yeah. life. Um, because you can really get creative. You can make animals. You can make a teacup. You can make whatever. Uh -huh wherever your creativity leads yeah. you. So you're sort of given a hunk of clay and have at it? Is that kind of what? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what what Kathy likes to do is give a skill and say, you know, you can try out this skill or you can just 
do something <laughs> different, <laughs> you know, whatever, Great. wherever you're led. But um, yeah, to, to give kids kind of a toolkit of options that yeah. they can use to um, progress their work technically uh -huh. or also just to play and yeah, make mistakes, figure out what works, what doesn't, and um, create Great. something new. Yeah. And do they paint their projects at the end or? Yeah, they can they be painted and some, some things can be, um, you know, glazed after they're fired, uh -huh. but some also can be painted while the clay is wet. So yeah. there are some different fun ways to uh -huh. approach it. But then we also have um, summer camps during the summer ah. um, with all different kinds of uh, painting and crafting options. Um, we have a homeschool class that's starting October 1st that's a painting wow. class. Um, so different options for kids. Sounds like it. And are the summer camps uh, a week long or two weeks? Or They're one week long. This mm -hmm. year we had eight one-week camps. Oh, great. That's great. And yeah. I noticed online that you, you and you mentioned um, having some weekend classes. And do you, and, and you sometimes get uh, instructors from further afield for the weekend classes, mm -hmm. is that right? So yeah. what are some of the weekend classes that you've been running? Well, one that's coming up is really cool. Um, an, uh, an artist named Stephen Proctor is coming mm -hmm. um, October 2nd to do a large-scale pots pottery class. I mean, these oh. are like this oh, tall. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and he throws them in sections. So we're doing both um, a class where you can come participate and learn how to do that and also um, a workshop uh, just a, a demo uh -huh. that you can come and watch so things like that where it's not something that we necessarily have the staff or resources to do all the uh -huh. time but it's something special that we can do yeah yeah oh that's great and um, are there certain classes that are particularly popular as you uh, as you offer these things are there or are they just all popular because everybody wants to do some? <laughs> um, I, I think these ones where we are offering something a little bit new uh -huh. um, tend to be popular. Uh, a few weeks ago, we did one with a potter named Bob Green who came hmm. and taught a Raku, an alternative firing class, which is um, the Raku is done in a different type of kiln, and we recently got a Raku kiln, so oh. it was kind of like our first opportunity to use it with people, <laughs> which was really fun. Um, and I think, again, I, I'm just learning these things, sure. but it's it's hotter and faster. Oh, um, okay. And so the kind of effects that you get on the outside of the pottery is different. And then the <clears throat> alternative firing techniques that he was teaching was in a pit that we created in the ground <laughs> outside oh, wow. the pottery school. And you create a fire in there and you cover it and you leave it, you know, like roasting a pig or something yeah. almost. And the effect hmm. that it made on the pottery was amazing it looked hmm. just like flames around the the works oh, it wow. was yeah amazing so we're actually we added a Raku class um, for this fall great and so that's a local instructor for that yes yeah oh that's great and do you teach any classes yourself I'm not teaching currently okay. um, I hope down the road maybe I can carve out a little more time <laughs> to possibly <laughs> do that um, yeah, I would love to maybe do a class with like the teen, a teenage group uh -huh. in the new space at some point. Great, that's great. So we've referenced the new space yeah. a little <laughs> bit. So tell me about it. Tell me, talk to us about what's happening. Um, we received the Kickstart grant from the town, oh, which right. is a wonderful opportunity. So that mm -hmm. is able to um, help us with paying for rent in a new space. So it's allowing us to make this transition to expanding. Uh -huh. um, some people have heard about the new space and think that we're moving. Uh, we're not moving, we're staying okay. in that space of Route 7 for the pottery program, but we're adding a second location okay. and it's in the Marble Works. Oh, it is? Yeah. Where, where in the Marble Works are you gonna be? It is 63 Maple Street. So it's, um, if you're driving in from the north, it's the first building on the left right across the street from the Addison, Addison Independent. Independent. And do you remember what was in that space before? So if, for people could... Yeah, it was end of life services. Oh, it was, okay. Yeah, I know that space. Um, and it has a lot of light. Um, we've just painted it and redone the floors and um, it's a really bright, lovely space. Uh, so that's where we'll have all of our non-clay classes oh, okay. um, starting November 1st. November 1st? Yes, <laughs> coming up. Oh, that is exciting. That is, that's fast. So, so, 
there won't be any more painting down at, on Route 7. Right. It'll, it'll just be the clay. Yeah. And um, one of the reasons why that's great is because we do have open studio hours for people who are currently taking a clay class or who um. Um, sign up to be, uh, we call it independent study, mm -hmm. who can come in and, and work on their own time. Yeah. Um, and we'd like to have some of those hours reserved every day, but as we're booking painting and drawing and crafting classes in that space, um, it can sometimes conflict with, yeah. with the, that time that we'd like to, to set aside. So it will really benefit both programs. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Well, congratulations on being um, a recipient of the Kickstart program. I thought that was a very creative uh, program that the Better Mineral Partnership yeah, uh, absolutely. I'm so excited to see the other businesses in town, and yeah. um, I really feel very grateful to be a part of this kind of revival of downtown yeah. that's happening. Yeah. Um, and can't wait to just be physically downtown sure. so that we're a little bit closer to everything that's going on and connecting with other nonprofit leaders to find creative collaborations is really exciting to me. Yeah, that's great. And I hadn't realized. Uh, initially, when you said that that the Marble Works was part of the what where they were considering, I was just sort of thinking of Main Street. So it's nice that mm -hmm. it's a little more expanded where they are encouraging the businesses. So, yeah, I hope that it might draw some people into the sure. Marble Works. Um, and something that's really wonderful for us and our program specifically is that uh, it has accessible parking, yes. and the building that we're in also has two ADA compliant bathrooms. So, oh, yeah. you know, and it's one level. Yes. And some of those requirements are a little hard to check every box um, yeah. on Main Street. So being able to have an accessible space was really important to us. So yeah. we couldn't oh, be happier about that. That is great. That's great. That's a nice location. And is that where your office is going to be then? Yes. Yep. So nice. And we now that um, Printer's Alley is open um, to get into the Marble Works. You right. don't just have to get it's into really the right north there. side. So, yeah. 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 So... That's terrific. That is going to be very exciting. So tell me what, you know, a day or a week in the life of the executive directors is like <laughs> in this, uh, with the Middlebury Studio School. What well, I think, see? yeah, every week um, has a new <laughs> learning goal mm -hmm. <laughs> for me. Um, coming in, I really wanted to just take some time to observe what was already happening at the school because mm -hmm. they've been doing great things. You know, they don't need anyone to yeah. come in and overhaul what they're doing because they're really beloved by the community. People yeah. who come in and take classes can't say enough about what it means to them as a part of their lives in town. Yeah. Um, so coming in and just learning from Kathy and Barb and Mary about um, what they do that is successful mm -hmm. um, was a big part of the beginning and it's yeah. absolutely still an ongoing part of what I do. <laughs> um, I've loved going in and um, being a part of some classes and meeting the community members who are a part of the school because that really has shaped yeah. the culture of Middlebury Studio School is all of the people who are there, not just the staff. Um, but we have um, expanded our staff. The two part-time art coordinator positions are new. <laughs> so we're uh -huh. really a new group kind of yeah. all learning together. So my job has involved some kind of thinking of structural thinking around personnel policies and um, funding in mm -hmm. particular. How, how are we paying for <laughs> all this new growth? Sure. Um, pursuing um, these grants, which we've been so lucky to uh, receive. Um, yeah, kind of everything from the really big picture strategic thinking yeah. and board governance to um, some of the day-to-day -day of what's going on in yeah, the classes, yeah. which and is fun. I like having kind of those different hats that I get to switch modes of thinking. Yeah. 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 It, that is the life of a nonprofit executive director, yeah. isn't it? And you probably have to do some fundraising as well. Yes. Is that right? <laughs> Certainly. Are there certain activities that you do that are uh, particular fundraisers associated, sort of special to your organization? We have a few that we've done in the past. Um, and we'll probably create some new yeah. ones and I think this new space will allow us to create some new fundraising opportunities as well. Um, but this year in the spring right before I came on um, the fundraising committee uh, did a get the picture fundraiser where um, our teaching artist did portraits of people's pets oh, and it was wildly successful <laughs> and um, the, I mean the portraits were just so fun to see yeah. and I think oh, yeah. the amount of support we got spoke to 
how much people appreciate the school and also how much people love their love pets. their pets. Yes, <laughs> yeah. I would bet. That, did, was there any? Were there any like un, really unusual pets? I mean, were they painting goldfish or guinea pigs? I and think I mostly mostly saw dogs and cats. Yeah. There may have been a, a few that were yeah other types of animals. I'm not <laughs> sure, um, but that that's one that we'll probably do again. That was yeah. great. Yeah, that sounds great. Wow. Well, you got another grant recently, which is actually how I first came to know of you yeah. um, through the Vermont Arts Council, a cultural facilities grant that you had applied for. And what yeah. is that um, grant going to be used for? This is a, a really important one that we feel very grateful <laughs> to have gotten. Um, it will help us with a renovation of the bathroom at our Route 7 site ah. um, so that we can make it larger and ADA compliant, which our current bathroom isn't, mm -hmm. which really is great because it expands the people who can come right. <laughs> and um, take part in our classes. We do have programs um, that we conduct with groups that do need access to uh, an ADA compliant bathroom who we have been um, serving in just spaces outside of our own school. So mm -hmm. we've been taking our teachers and our programs and materials and hosting classes in other spaces, oh. um, which you know we can do because we want to make sure that we're serving as much of our community as yeah. possible, but it will just be so much better when we can welcome everyone into right. our studio. Sure, sure. So where, when you go into the community, do you go to some of the retirement communities? Do you go to the schools? What, what sort of things have you been doing? We have a partnership with the um, community services of Addison County. And so it's um, some of those, some of the, their clients mm -hmm. who we set up classes with, and that's supported in part by the Walter Surf Grant. Oh, nice. So you go to wherever they live or... Their space they? or tertiary spaces okay. that we find, yeah. yeah. So with the improvement of the bathroom and then also the expansion uh -huh. between those two, we'll really yeah. be able to do all of our programming in okay. our own spaces, which is also, I think, for a lot of people, it's good to be able to come to a familiar space yeah. and f know that it's a place where you're welcomed, already know, be familiar with it um, mm -hmm. so that you don't have to be anxious about coming into a new space. So being able to provide that kind of comfort, I think, is yeah. a, a piece of what we're trying yeah. to do. Yeah. So um, nobody wasn't, that's a double negative, impacted <laughs> by the pandemic and COVID. And right. how did that affect the Middle Boyer Studio School? What We did have happened? to close for a period of time mm -hmm. and then open um, with limited capacity. We had some classes outside. Um, we were able to shift to online classes and through that, hmm. actually, I think, found some audiences that we m didn't have before and people oh. who hadn't heard about the school. So there is a silver lining to, yes. <laughs> to some of that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was certainly difficult not being able to do um, classes in person for a while and then when we were not, not at full capacity. Um, and and yeah. currently, we're still um, doing slightly smaller classes um, for, for some of the classes and uh, do have a, a mask policy mm -hmm. for everyone in our space, mm -hmm. particularly because we have um, kids coming sure. in and participating who can't yeah. be vaccinated. Right. So how do online classes work? I mean, obviously you can't do clay stuff online. Right. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately the pottery classes didn't, didn't really translate, but yeah. um, we do have some teachers who are really creative. Um, Eileen Gambosi is a local art teacher who's just like, wildly creative and <laughs> she oh. has online classes actually that we're, we're doing we're continuing some online classes oh, okay. um, with her and a couple other instructors this fall um, and those can be found on our website mm -hmm. but you know some people again I mean, aren't quite comfortable being in person so we right. want to be able to offer both options so how does she do it is it on zoom and, and we, she can see everybody in their rooms or how does that yeah work? We, we do it on zoom uh -huh. um, and we have a webcam that shoots from above oh. so that the students are able to see her front on and what she's doing okay. <laughs> from, yeah, right. from top above. down. Yeah, of. exactly. Okay. And what, what, what is, she, is she doing? Drawing or painting or what is? Mostly drawing some other crafts with kind of common household materials that mm -hmm. you might have. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's great. That's great. So you're going to continue the online we will, yeah. Most of our programming will be in person, mm -hmm. um, but we will continue some online classes and just continue to be yeah. 
flexible as yeah. we've all learned <laughs> to be, you know, depending on what happens yeah. with the you know, public health yeah. crisis. Um, we'll, we'll always stick to what is safest for the community. Sure. So we're ready to adapt, but hope that we can continue in person. Yeah. Well, sure. And you it sounds like you've really adapted quite nicely, which is um, which is great. And I just was going to ask you something that I've completely forgotten what it was. Um, so, oh, I know. I think we haven't really talked about volunteers. Do you have volunteers that um, come and help? We do. If people want to get involved, how do they um, do that? We do have volunteers. I think mostly uh -huh. people who have taken a class or somehow got, get tied into the community of the school who yeah. then we're able to contact if we have an upcoming event that we need a little help with. Um, and people have been really generous and wonderful with mm -hmm. their time. Um, we also have studio assistants who um, help with uh, the clay studio and just keeping it mm -hmm. running and some of them are artists who come in and use the studio in, in exchange for um, assisting okay. us with some projects. Um, but on our website we have contact information um, for myself and also um, a general inquiry yeah. email. Okay. Um, so yeah, could, always... could high school students or college students come and help um, volunteer if they were interested? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, we don't have, I'd say, regular weekly hours yeah. for volunteers. I mean, there are only a small number of studio assistants uh -huh. that we need at any one yeah. time. Um, we currently don't have a, an internship program. I really believe that interns should be paid. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <And> so, <laughs> they thank you. <laughs> um, I I'm, don't want to try to get any free labor out of high school sure. and college students. But I'm so excited that the new space is within walking distance to the college. And so I do hope to create some programs that are more geared towards that age uh -huh. group and so that it could be a space where people just want to come be yeah. <laughs> and commune. And um, I'm looking forward to connecting with people from that age group to right. hear from them what, what do they need in town, what are they looking yeah. for, so that we can create that space. Yeah. So that's one partnership. You've talked about being able to be downtown and sort of have other partnerships with other what, what are you thinking about sort of for the future around, around those things? What's your well, where we are that? in the Marble Works, we're pretty close in physical proximity to mm -hmm. the um, Community Music Center and to Town Hall Theater. Uh -huh. um, and just meeting some of the leaders in town, Sadie Brightman and Lisa Mitchell, I think that there is potential to do like a combo art camp with music and theater and art <laughs> or, oh, yeah. or um, working with Kelly Hickey who has a great creative mind who was running the bundle markets yes. of um, maybe having art markets that are you know in the summer down in the riverfront park mm -hmm. um, I don't know yet <laughs> what the possibilities <laughs> are but um, there are some ideas that are starting to brew yeah. there is there any way to um, to get some of your dance experience into all of this, or is that not part of the mission of the studio school? Oh, I hope so. I, th I think, well, <laughs> our mission is to provide accessible arts programming for people okay. of all ages and abilities, and so I definitely think that can include movement. Actually, as I've just done pottery a little bit now since yeah. I've been there, something that I loved about it was learning how physical it is. Mm, that kind mm -hmm. of the posture of your body determines the shape of the pot that you end up oh, with in a way that, you know, I thought it was more just about your hands, but it really is very physically engaged. And so I, I think that movement kind of has a role and a piece in sure. the way that we walk through the world and also interact with yeah. art. So. I think there could be a connection. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what they, what, when my kids were little, you know, a long time ago, they, they were some dance teachers. I don't know if they still do things, but I, I would guess that there are opportunities to, to do something different than anything is already being done and the notion of movement and maybe for adults who could, might be interested in that sort of thing too. Yeah, or even adults who don't think they're interested in that. There you go. <laughs> it's just like... <laughs> You know, I think that we get used to being like, okay, it's work time, or okay, it's a project time, and I sit at a desk and do it. Whereas kids kind of have a more natural intuition of, oh, I actually need to like get up and move my body so that I can focus on this thing. And right. some kids and some adults need that that movement, that kind of physical connection yeah. to be able to learn or interact yeah. with what they're doing. And so I think creating spaces where you can 
welcome that as a piece. Mm -hmm. um, kind of helps everybody. I think it does. Helps with your focus on for everybody. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's great. That's great. So do you have? Um, do you all have a strategic plan for? Um, for the school, you have so you're thinking about other things down the road. I, mean, I imagine that getting this additional space was like very front burner, pretty important. Do mm -hmm. you have some other sort of longer term plans now that you've accomplished that? Right, <laughs> <laughs> that's a great question because that's right where we are in our organizational okay. thinking. Um, yeah, expanding the space was a part of the long term strategic plan, mm -hmm. um, including getting executive director. Um, that the board had put together um, uh -huh. in the last draft of the strategic plan. And now that we've accomplished those big, two yeah. big goals, um, we do need to build out our strategic plan a little farther. But um, we're able to do some planning, obviously, for the organization, how we're going to grow at least over the next three years before mm -hmm. applying for that Kickstart grant to get the space. Um, Great. Yeah, so there's Great. certainly room, room for growth. Yeah. Um, but we do have some some work to do to figure out exactly what that growth yeah. looks like. Yeah, that's great. Well, congratulations on um, accomplishing two very big things, getting an executive director and uh, and new space. So, Well, that's yeah, thank safe. you. I can't take the um, – the board gets a lot of the <laughs> well, credit for sure. that. Well, <laughs> sure. It's, it's a team effort. It is. It, it's always a team effort. Yeah. And I think our community is good at doing community things like that. So that's terrific. I think we're getting pretty close to the end here. Okay. Um, is there anything else uh, you'd like folks to know about the Middlebury, Middlebury Studio School before we wrap up? Um, I think just go to our website and check out our classes because um, you might stumble upon something that you might not be thinking you need to do right now, <laughs> but that might end up being a great opportunity. Please, um, when we're open on November 1st, come to our space. We will have an open house kind of opening event on November 13th. Um, oh, great. And that will be an opportunity for people to have a snack, do smart, walk through the space, <laughs> see what's going on, which will be fun. Um, but yeah, I think that everyone has something to benefit from taking an art class, even if they don't aspire to come out on the other side with a technical skill under mm -hmm. their belt. Just having that time to work through a creative process, I think, can kind of jolt your brain into thinking mm -hmm. in a different way. Um, it's also a way to just connect with some people in the community. Yeah. Uh, there are lots of different things that you can get out of it. So yeah. I encourage everybody to do a little art. <laughs> that sounds like a good message yeah. to end on. Thanks so much for coming on the show, Sarah. Thank you. Um, that's it for now. My guest today has been Sarah Briggs, Executive Director of the Middlebury Studio School. Thanks to MCTV for producing this show. Thank you for watching, and we hope to see you next time.